today I want to discuss a little bit a couple of points that have come out in the comments uh, coming directly from you guys actually specifically we're talking about the upbeat when there is a rest at the beginning of a bar to talk about this I chose the second movement of uh, Tchaikovsky's Serenity for Strings the Waltz it's a very common piece that is found really often on uh, uh, competitions uh, and auditions music creates the technique so instead of doing a dry exercise which can accompany the studying and the practicing at home uh, we can look at a piece of music and extract the technical information that we need from it hello everyone welcome to this new episode of conducting tools i'm Gennaro Riglio. i'm a conductor and a composer and um, this episode is going to be all about upbeat if you have any questions just leave them down in the comments and i will do my best to answer them in one of the next episodes and now let's start let's take the usual approach what does the score tell us? Well, first of all, it's a waltz, 3-4. We're going to do this in one. This is also suggested by the metronome marking. The very start belongs to the first violins. And the first violins start on the second beat of the bar. Now, whenever you have this kind of a beginning, what you need to try to do is to avoid to give a pulse on the preparation. In other words, you give a strong upbeat like this. What's going to happen is that half of the orchestra is going to start on here. It's not clear because you're already giving an impulse to the orchestra. So half of them are going to understand that as their starting point and half of them are not. What you want to do is give a pulseless upbeat and then give a pulse on the downbeat where the rest is. So that would become and boom. If you do it slowly, if you look at like this, this clicks only on the downbeat and not on the preparation. Let's put it the other way around. If the piece started on the downbeat, then you would do one, two, three, pa -di -ra -pi -ra -di -ra -di -ra. click and down. Since the piece doesn't start at the downbeat, but starts on the second beat, then what you want to do is and boom, pa -di -ra -di -ra -di. so you want to click on the downbeat but not on the preparation. You give a pulseless preparation and then you click on the downbeat. Now, the second thing that uh, uh, we're seeing here is pieces in three, but it is being conducted in one. What's your choice here? Of course, you can do this, and it's going to be perfectly clear. It's one, 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 one. Now, can you make this a little more interesting? Of course we can. But before we go into that, uh, you need to make sure that your one is clear. In order for your one to be clear, and this is where you can practice uh, with a metronome, you, you need to always land on the point from where you started. So if this is your starting point, then you need to land here. That is the first thing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The second thing that you need to pay attention to is not to do something like one, two, three, one, two, three. So rounding down your gestures so that three basically then corresponds with one. Then it becomes confusing because it's one, two, three, and then what are you gonna do for one? You're gonna have to go down or do something else or stop. Third and final aspect, what you don't want to do is that if your tempo is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, what you don't wanna do is getting there too fast. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, and then you're gonna to have to wait here before you drop in order to make up for that tempo. So you need to space it so that it's one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. In the column, the space between the beats is even. And then it becomes uh, an homogeneous um, gesture. Yes, this is something that you can practice with a metronome. And you can increase the speed of it 
gradually. The important thing is that you always check one that you pulse at the bottom. Click, 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 click. Two that you always land in the same place where you started from. So if you start from here, then you need to land here. One, 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 one. Why? Because if you land in a different place, unless it's really intentional and there is only a few very rare cases where that uh, um, can work, then um, you're going to uh, create some confusion in the orchestra because you set an expectation and then you don't deliver on it. So you say, okay, well, we're starting from here and then I'm gonna stop here. Look at what happens. Imagine to be a player and have to play with this. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. It's very difficult to understand if you want to go, if you, if you want me as a player to, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go down? It's, it's difficult to read. If we want to break three of uh, beating time in this, uh, in this piece, the next thing we need to look at is where the orchestra needs a pulse. So the orchestra needs a pulse at the beginning, obviously, um, and then it doesn't need anything actually. We, what we can do is giving a pulse on bar, on bar four, simply to enhance a little bit the pop, um, that rest that we have on uh, the second uh, eighth note. But then the, the the pulse that the orchestra really needs is in this on the following bar. And then again, uh, another interesting pulse that you can give is on the cello part on, uh, on the eighth bar. Why is it important to understand which pulses, which pulse the orchestra really needs? Because if you understand which pulse the orchestra needs, then you can drop the others, which means that you can stop beating time and you can control the orchestra, help them and catch them when they need it the most. So if you put it all together, um, Whenever you practice any of these, you should always practice slowly. It's pointless to start at a fast tempo if you cannot uh, control your movement, your body, your arm, everything. You need to learn the physicality of the gestures and your body needs to learn how to go about them. So always start uh, at a slower tempo and then work your way up. Now, the exercise that I uh, showed um, the exercise that I showed when you come to do this type of one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The interesting thing about it is that when you get into the habit to pulse at the bottom, then you can turn this from this into this. And this will still be clear. So umpara 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 umpa you do basically you basically are drawing a circle in the air but you cannot just draw a circle in the air when conducting without any pulse any point of reference otherwise it becomes extremely unclear what you need to do when you do whether that that goes also when you do up and down but uh, especially when you get out of pattern, then you really need to put the pulse where it's needed. Otherwise, it's not going to be clear for anybody ever. Having said that, thank you for watching. Have fun practicing. And if you have any doubts, anything that uh, is not clear to you, just put it down in the comment, for instance, upbeat again, or conducting in one. For more in-depth technical videos, check out my website. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, happy conducting, happy practicing, and be kind to yourself. Ciao!